and gentlemen, we're very honored today to have uh, with us Mr. Fred Chan, the Prime star. Mr. Wong, essentially of Pendatang, uh, the film that was essentially crowdfunded by the efforts of hundreds of Malaysians around the world uh, to essentially an epic release that has now brought you guys to about 500,000 views in just about six days. Congratulations on the thank incredible you, thank you. So yes, um, Fred, so how do you feel now that uh, you've become a hashtag international superstar? Uh, <laughs> Wow, I never thought I never thought of this uh, in, in that in that way. Uh, well, I hope that uh, yeah, it's really good that uh, more people can uh, see see our movies, not just Malaysians, because I think the message is important because like the racial issues is not just happening in our country. So I think it's good that many people can see this and uh, think about it and try to like work to to make the world a better place for mm. everyone. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And it was really interesting, I think, the way that your character went from, you know, being a father, right? He cares so much about his children, right? To I guess going out of his way to save the girl that he was at first right by saying like, hey, uh, we better call the police uh. okay. <laughs> Then you know like at some later point, you know, he goes out there and he actually risks his life um, for that girl. So like I guess like how do you feel about um, Mr. Wong as a character? I mean like of course like you're the actor, but like how do you feel about Mr. Wong as a character? I think Mr. Wong is a racist Chinese. <laughs> yeah, 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 he is. So uh, and he's also a businessman. Okay, he he was a handphone uh, seller before the, the uh, segregation and everything. Mm -hmm. So everything he, uh, he way, the way of he, he thinks is like very materialistic and materialistic and kind of like uh, how to say. Uh, in, Ch I, in Chinese, it's very sense. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Actually, I, I he doesn't really wanted to uh, help the little girl. Also, it's, it's more like uh, he just he loves his family so much, so he just like give in and listen to, to her wife, and what her children want. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Then uh, at some points, the how to say the humanity sides of him, yeah, the hu human sides of him just came out. That he just decided that, that I have to just keep doing this. I see. But the First, uh, in the first place, he's doing this. It's all just because of his family. But he's in, in deep down, he's still a racist person. Actually, I see. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. Interesting. What eventually led you into this role uh, to well take up? I think Kuban Pictures call for like say audience tapes. Like, what's going through your mind at the time, and uh, what led you to eventually take up the opportunity? Mm, actually, it's, it's uh, nothing very noble or anything. Uh, because I'm still quite new in the industry, so I just try to grab any opportunity I can get. So when I saw there's a open casting by my, my picture, so I just go and try. I see. Yeah, and I, I because I when I go for audition, I didn't uh, recruit. I, I didn't have the full script. Also, I didn't know Wong is the main character. Of the movie. <laughs> so I thought he's just a, a random uncle in a Chinese family. Okay. Yeah, but but I just want to grab any opportunity I can get. Okay. So I just go for audition. I yeah, see. yeah, and luckily I, I got the role. And I think that you were a teacher before that, right? I think that like uh, you shared a little bit with me beforehand, uh, and you mentioned that you were a teacher with KPM for about twelve years, right? Uh, ten years. Ten, yeah, because the first two years I was teaching in international school. I see. So the ten years I was in the government system. Ah, I see. Okay. And then I believe you also mentioned that you were a teach for Malaysia fellow, and not just any teach for Malaysia fellow, but you were part of the inaugural first batch. Yeah, teach yes. for Malaysia fellows. Yes, I am. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Because I, at that time I just found out this program, and I think it's very meaningful, mm. and also can help me to get a teaching certificate. Wow. Because okay. back then I, I was studying in uh, counseling without the teaching uh, qualification. Mm. So I think this program is really, really good and meaningful. So I applied for it, and so luckily I got it. I see. Cool. Well, tell me a little bit about that. 
if you could, friend, did you always want to teach? Or do you feel that maybe there were like some things in your life that made you want to teach? Um, I think that's kind of related to how I think about the purpose of life. <laughs> yeah. Because to, to, yeah, because to me, like, uh, the purpose of life is like, if you're, you're, bring, you're, you're brought to this world, then uh, you have to like, bring some meaning to this world. Then only your life is meaningful. Mm -hmm. Or else, you, uh, you, 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 you just live here and just eat, makan, tido, makan, tido. <laughs> or, or maybe makan, tido, earn, earn money work, just for yourself. <laughs> Then it will be like, uh, to me that, that kind of life is like not that meaningful. Yeah. So if, if, one, if a person can like contribute back to the society, you know, doing something good, make the, make the world a better place, then only I feel that my life, my life is meaningful. Wow. So I think uh, by doing uh, education, involve myself in education, teaching is a way of me contributing to the society. Then the point, yeah. when did you think about this in the first place? Was it like, um, I'm like a pen Year old. What is the meaning of life? <laughs> I, I think the, the one of the things that uh, influenced me a lot uh, about having all these thoughts is a novelist called uh, Wisely, Ni Kuang in, in China, his name in Chinese. So because I, I read, I read uh, his, his novel since I was uh, twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then his novel talks about uh, a lot about humanities and things like that. Mm. So here's where I have these kind of thoughts mm. about like uh, what's the meaning of life, what's the purpose of life. Wow. Yeah. But not everybody would act upon it and just be all like, I'll make that my entire career. You know, like I'll make that uh, you know a guide for the way that I live my life. So just like, um, that, like would you share with us like what led you to transition then from well I guess like teaching over to acting. Uh, performing is, is always my passion since I was small. Yeah. And I, I, I did a lot of performances like including singing and dancing during university years. So I always liked performing. Then uh, one another reason that, that just now when I talk about that the realistic side why I choose to be a teacher partly also because I can give me a, a security in the, uh, the financial side because uh, my family wasn't in a, a good uh, to say financial situations uh, when the time I graduate so I need to get a, a secure job so very quickly I get I, I go and interview to become as uh, the teacher in the financial so, and why I didn't pursue uh, performing arts or acting at that time because the income for this uh, pathway is not that secure, not that stable. Mm. Yeah. Then after many years, after everything already kind of settled down, mm. then, then I feel like maybe it's time for me to try out other things that I like. Because teaching is my passion, acting also my passion. So I already tried teaching for half years. I think I don't want to regret, so I wanted to try other things also. Yeah, youngster used to I like to say like you only live once. Yeah, yeah, I only live once. I, I don't get, I, I don't know what happens uh, after this life. So yeah, why don't I just try uh, as much as I could um, to do things that I like. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. So now in Pendatang, right? So you didn't really know uh, at the outset that you were going to become the main character. So how was it like actually transitioning over from the I yeah, I'm going to be just like a random uncle la, coffee shop uncle la, you know like uh, Mr. Mr. Wong uh, that could be like Mr. Lee uh, Mr. O uh, or whatever uh, same thing one la, but like when you realize that you were the main character right so then like how do you feel? Uh, of course I feel very excited yeah because yeah, you, you know as a main character means I, 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 I can act more I get a lot of exposure this and that uh, so I was really excited then but I, it doesn't take a lot of like, transition kind of thing because uh, to me my work is just like whenever script I get I have to just study and then I just act it out mm, so there's no like not really a transition there mm, I see. was I guess acting on camera like something that was 
always natural to you or did you have experience with uh, doing it before as well? Acting in front of camera? Yes. Yeah, before, actually, I started uh, doing acting as, uh, as a part-time job in 2019. Ah, yeah. So I also okay. like, I played in a commercial before, short film, uh, drama, mm. small characters, mm. here and there. Yeah. So, I learned through my experience uh, and also attended uh, acting class yeah, to polish my, my skills. Ah, wow. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. So, at the same time, that's kind of different from, say, acting with like a whole like, crew. And of course, like you had a wonderful cast uh, of different people. Yes. Like, for example, like you have Kaida, uh, then you also have like, Shireen, then you have Mejun, and like a whole bunch of like, other people right there as well. What, what was it like working with the cast of uh, Pandata? Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm an introvert, so I'm not, not really good at uh, socializing. Okay. So I'm glad uh, they are very friendly. <laughs> yeah, they are very friendly, and few yeah, of yeah. them are also very approachable and very, how to say, good in like bringing people together. A, a special mention is uh, one of the cast is uh, from Singapore, mm -hmm. Jonathan Chong. Ah, yeah, I, I, I think he's the one that bringing um, us together. Ah, yeah, I remember yeah. he's like the soldier, right? One yeah, soldier. he's a soldier. Yeah, ah. although he's a villain in the movie. Ah. Hi la. Yeah, but in real life, uh, he is very nice, very friendly, <laughs> and then, like always, like bring us together, like uh, rehearsing okay. in our own time, okay. or, like like playing cool. games, ah, this and that. Okay. Yeah, then it makes our relationship gets better, ah, better okay. because we also live together in the same apartment during ah, the shooting periods. Ah, yeah, okay. and also like Mei Jun, she's a veteran actor, uh, actress, and for uh, uh, in the industry for many years, but she's very nice, and I don't feel. And a bit, uh, any bits of uh, arrogance in her, mm. so she's just like very friendly and very helpful, and a lot of other experience. Actually, uh, I think other than Sharines, all other cast are very much experienced than me. Mm. So yeah, I can learn from them also. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and uh, speaking of uh, Sharine, apparently she calls you Lota. <laughs> 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 No, I asked her, right? So, like, what language do you guys? And this is actually a curiosity that I had uh, about the way that you guys actually interact with the set. So then, like, and because like normally on set you guys like speak English, right? No, I think right. we speak Mandarin most of the time. Mandarin most of the time. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, I see. Yeah, yeah. Ah, interesting. Which is interesting because um, I guess like what. Uh, was it like going from like say Mandarin right while you're like just doing the set planning everything over to like Cantonese because like the movie itself is in, uh, mostly Cantonese yeah. right? Um, I think yeah, yeah. We, we, we also like practice because uh, practice uh, in terms of like, language and also the, the script itself so we rehearse in our, our own so that uh, we can know uh, how can we do better and also to polish our pronunciation in Cantonese ah. because uh, some of us are, are not the native Cantonese speaker. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Interesting. Cool, cool, cool. So, like, did you feel that there were any, like, difficulties when it came to actually filming or do you feel like it was just, like, very natural, like, you kind of, like, know what's going on or otherwise? Uh, generally, everything uh, goes quite smooth and quite smooth and of course, there are parts that sometimes I, I struggle that I, how should I, I perform it? Is, is it the best way to deliver this line? Is it the best way to deliver uh, to, to play this scene? Mm. But generally, everything is it went quite smooth. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, because everyone is uh, so professional. Even though it's uh, crowdfunded with small budget, but all the teams that we had there is really like professional and they did their job very very well. Mm. Like, the art team, the wow, the, the, the cameraman and everything. Wow. Yeah. So shout out to all of you for uh, creating a great experience. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Because sometimes uh, during uh, in my other experience, sometimes you you might have uh, people coming late or sometimes director have to shout. In this shooting process and for this pendatang, everything is really quite smooth and we really had a great time together. Ah, the whole okay. crews and cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, 
I heard that uh, Ken Ken has been like directing movies for about like 20 years, mm-hmm. if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, okay then. Mm, so, if you were to think about the main difference, right, between, I guess, working on Pendatang and like any other projects that you had uh, taken part in uh, so far, so like, what would you say are some of the main differences? Main differences is, uh, first of all, I have to stay there for three weeks. I, I never had that kind of experience before. Yeah. Normally it's like a one day uh, thing on right? Yeah, sometimes it, it depends on the role. Sometimes few days, uh, and most most of the time it's just one day. And for this time I have to like, stay there for three weeks and together <laughs> with all the cars. So yeah, I think it's a really fun experience. Mm. Yeah, right. Like basically a holiday camp and go thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and like, you know, sometimes there, there are off days, uh, really like really like having a fun time, like like a holiday. Ah, so like you guys actually like hang out around, like yeah. like mostly hang out around like Kuping, that area, or like uh, you just kind of like Kampar. 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 Ah, Kampar. Kampar Pera. Kampar Pera. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Got you. Woohoo! Yeah, it's great that you had like uh, such a good time together. And uh, while no sequel has been confirmed for Pandatan just yet, I hope that you guys will get a chance yeah, to I hope so. <laughs> work together again. What do you think, I guess, about the world of Pandatan? Do you have any thoughts about that? Do you feel that our society could genuinely become something like that in the future? Mm, I don't think Malaysia will turn into like the world like that but in a way we and at, at this moment we're also kind of segregated in a way you know mm-hmm. so I hope uh, in the future we can get together more mm-hmm. right yeah yeah because now you can see still you can see a lot of uh, community that still like living with their own kinds and that. so it's like kind of segregated in a way yeah, although it won't, I, I don't think it will go into the extent like what you see in that time. But I, I hope it, it, it will be a good uh, reflection for us to think about and uh, to be more integrated in the future. So that's what I hope. Like. Mm, I see. Okay. Wonderful. So, what do you think, I guess, um, is the essential message of Pendatang, as far as you understand so far? I think one of it is like, um, we should always be think critically and not be manipulated by those who are in power because some, they, they want to like, divide the rules, they, they want to like, divide the rules for their own benefits. Oh, yeah. So one of the messages I think is like, we have to like, really think critically. And, and another part is like, uh, have to bring out the, the humanity sides of, of, of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the, uh, although it's a big cliche, mm-hmm. it's a very uh, important part mm-hmm. uh, so in, in our society. We have to like not always just thinking about our own races or, or religions. Mm. Or, we have to like not think from that angle so much. I see. And, okay. and I think like 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 the, the humanity part, love, is more important than race and religion. Ah. Okay. Cool. Cool. So I think the subject that you thought was history back in uh, school, right? I guess like, would you say that there's like any kind of like alignment or like you feel that there are any things that you gain from like teaching history um, that you ended up applying while you were, I guess, acting in Padata? Uh, like I said, I got to this project just because I want to grab an, an opportunity, any opportunity I had, but I, I'm very happy that to know that this um, movie is so meaningful. So it's not that I, I choose Pendatang because uh, it is uh, to say aligned with my ideology. Ah. Yeah, but I'm happy to find, to find out that, that it 
actually like kind of a lot. So it's so kind of like a surprise lah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, wonderful. It's, I think Malaysia's very first dystopian film. Mm -hmm. Like, have you ever read any like uh, dystopian literature before or anything related yeah. to, well, dystopian narratives? Like in any Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of movies and so novels about like dystopian uh, world. So yes, I've read uh, some, some of the story. Mm. But is it the first in Malaysia? I'm not sure. I, I think that there are, there are some other movies. I could be wrong, yeah. So, yeah, but I just, I, I, I can't point out which one. Ah, okay, okay. I see. Cool, cool, cool. Well, when you kind of like think about the days ahead, do you have the feeling that maybe this movie will sort of like change the discourse about, um, say, race relations in Malaysia? Or like, do you have any hopes for that? Of course, I hope that, uh, that it will bring a big impact uh, good, good in a good way uh, to, to Malaysia. But uh, I don't think it's that powerful at the moment. But I think what we have achieved so far is like it creates more dialogues. Although, uh, by looking at the comments uh, from, from YouTube and, and in, uh, social media, some there, there are some like a bit negative, but there are also a lot of positive comments that are talking about like that we should like reflect upon ourselves and then and work together to create a better uh, environment for our kids and the future. Mm, so I yeah, so I, I hope it can be powerful, but I don't think. <laughs> yeah, it's that powerful yet, but we, at least but we achieved something. I see. Yeah, we cool. create a lot of uh, good conversations and dialogues. Yeah. I see. Cool, cool, cool. So I guess like in the best case scenario, um, of course like maybe the movie isn't that uh, sort of like influential, powerful, change the world type thing. In fact, like um, one of the last things I said in uh, my last video to Amir was, I asked the exact same question, like how do you think that Pandatang is going to change Malaysia? He said, you know, if Pandatang could change Malaysia, right, I'll be like, very afraid. <laughs> And his re rationale for that is that like, if a movie can really change you, it means that like, you know, people are, aren't really thinking in the first place. So like, they're not thinking that that's like, um, some cause for concern. But, well, what do you hope, I guess, would be the best case scenario impact of uh, the movie Pandatang in the long scale of things? I hope that people won't like, uh too focus too much on race, mm -hmm. but more on like love and humanity. Humanity, yeah. So and like think for others instead of just think for ourselves mm -hmm. or just your our own race. Mm -hmm. So we have to like uh, I hope to this movie to work and then you have to track one of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. So just don't, don't just care about like, our own benefit, or our own community, but think about you know, in a wider range, mm -hmm. in a wider perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, what can I do best for the country? Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. Very much like, ask not what your, your country, country can do for you, you but so ask what, what you, you can, can do for your country. country. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Just <laughs> wow! One of my, my favorite quotes. <laughs> we are aligned on that. Yeah, okay, yeah. great. Perfect. Well, all right then. Since you mentioned that, I want to draw back to uh, what you said at the outset when you mentioned that Mr. Wong, right, is ultimately a racist person on the inside. So by the end of the movie, after he's gone through this epic journey, you know, like he interviewed with Mr. Eddie, who was later got, who was later shot, um, and then later he went uh, essentially with the auntie across, almost across. Um, you know, like the border right here, only to get into that epic showdown right there. Do you feel that by the end of the movie, that Mr. Wong, right, had reformed? Do you feel that he had changed in some ways from being that racist person on the inside? Yeah, it, it does change him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but how much, mm, I'm not sure yet. But definitely, I, I think he'll be less racist than before, than <laughs> compared to the beginning of the movies. Definitely. Yeah. Mm. But he also, uh, I also think the possibility is that uh, Mr. Wong could hold, maybe after the incident, he hold the grudge and he become a more vengeful, vengeful per person than mm. before. That's maybe awesome. not, not that focus that much on, on the race, race but mm. he's be, be, become a more vengeful person. Uh, yeah, it might change him in, into that way. Uh, I see. Yeah. 
Okay, interesting. But then that actually also draws me to then think about your children. <laughs> Your children and uh, Kaida right there. So like, um, how do you interpret the fact that like the children, right? Like when they see Kaida, they just immediately start playing with her and stuff like that. That yeah, yeah. I, I, in a way, I agree that like no one is born racist. So if racism is taught. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, for Mr. Wong, it's like because for me myself growing in a, like a mainly Chinese community, although uh, my parents doesn't go into the extent that you cannot mix with other races, mm -hmm. but I, I I I still see you know from, from other elders there there are some uh, racist racist part of them. Yeah, to just try to avoid this and try to avoid that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so although it's not as bad. Uh, until like you, know, you cannot mix with others, but I, I hope this this uh, kind of uh, thoughts can be like corrected and mm. actually like all of us are, are just human. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I agree definitely with uh, the idea that like racism is something that's like thought. For example, I mean like. Um, there are some like stereotypes, I guess, that like you might see like here and there, like stereotypes, like for example, Malay people are lazy, or like say Indian people are bad at paying rent, for example. I mean, like there are stereotypes, right? Yes. And of course, like when you think about stereotypes, like you can see that there are some people who fit the stereotype, but of course there are some other people who go way beyond that yes. um, stereotype as well. So maybe a blind that's all like blanket thing right there isn't um, entirely right. Well, okay then. Like, I think I can add a bit on. Oh yeah, sure. Actually, uh, I because I, I, I play Wong as a Wong and he's a racist person, so I kind of like try to walk in their shoes and I also kind of understand why mm. racist people being racist. Because oh. uh, like there's no, no doubt that there are still some people like fit the stereotypes. Yeah. yeah. But the things that we need to uh, bring awareness and we need to educate people is like, even though maybe some people you see fit the stereotype, but not everyone is like that. So it's really not fair mm. for us to judge people based on the races. Mm. Okay. But I, I know some some uh, racist people according to experience because they have met people who fit the stereotypes. Yeah, but people need to like think more than that. Mm. Not everyone is like that. Uh, it's very unfair if people think of us in, in that way. We also doesn't like it, right? Yeah, we don't. We don't like that as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. So even though maybe you have met someone who is yeah, like what the, the normal people would say, but yeah, think more than that. Or maybe you have to like mix with more people from different races, then you will realize that no, actually that's not really true. That everyone, everyone in certain race fits certain stereotypes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even on my channel, I mean, like, you see, for example, Malay people who have gone on to, like, Harvard, even, like, people from, like, religious schools, um, you have essentially, like, Indian people as well who do uh, essentially great things, educationally speaking, as well. It's not a rare thing, by the way, but it's just some, like one of those things that, you know, like people tend to paper over because they don't actually look outside, right? Like they can be caught in those bubbles, don't apply critical thinking, so to speak. And I think also, right, one of the interesting things about Pendatang, uh, right, is that it shows us that just because somebody is a Tongyan, uh, so to speak, right? It doesn't actually mean that uh, they are going to be good, right? As we can see from Ho Ka Leong, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, that's uh, something to really think about as well. Okay then, so, I guess, are you potentially looking forward to, like, more roles, like, um, that are kind of related to your experience in Pendatang, or, like, perhaps, uh, would you be willing maybe to explore like uh, further sequels or other kinds of productions with Kuban pictures even if they are not necessarily Pendatang itself? Yeah, of course, of course. I think uh, as an actor, we will like to like play as many different roles as possible. Uh, then only see. that it will be more interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, of course, and, and actually, uh, at first, in the first place, I, uh, well, during the audition process, other than the Wong, I also auditioned for Ho. And I was hoping to get the, I was hoping to get the host role. I 
actually I was hoping to get, get that role. I, 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 I didn't know who was like, auditioned for that role at the time. Role. Yeah. Ah, but but okay. among these two roles, I don't think I can get roles. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, like, what was it like interacting with like Ho Ka Leong, like uh, on the set? Like, you know, like Nick Davis. Like, I mean... Oh, he's, he's, uh, he's very, very handsome, no doubt. And he's even, uh, to me, he's even <laughs> handsome in real person than on screen. <laughs> And he's all very experienced. Uh, okay. yeah. So yeah, I yeah. also like when in the process of like, like talking to him, I also like like try to learn from him. Yeah, because yeah. he has many years of experience in it, mm. performing arts and acting. Mm. Yeah, that's very approachable guy also. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think that it was interesting. One of the other themes actually, uh, I'll probably add this in a little bit later on, was also like the theme of like hypocrisy almost. Because like you notice right, like near the start of the movie, right, like he was like. When when he killed like Vincent, well not really the start right, it's like kind of like the middle already. When he killed uh, Vincent right, so like he was like saying you are a traitor to your own race, that kind of thing right, because like his uncle Eddie was uh, smuggling furniture to the other side right. But then later on then he goes to Anjik Hamid and uh, yeah like he basically just says I'm your best friend now. <laughs> So it's kind of interesting about like uh, how that illustrated that um, idea right there. Mm. Yeah, so I, I think I think the, the, what what I want to say that is like like some people they just care for themselves, they just care for the mm -hmm. money and not really the the monetary values or anything. Mm. So it doesn't really matter what race they are, right? Yeah. Like if you it are, doesn't matter what they do, there are people like that. Yeah. yeah. We have to avoid, try to avoid become that kind of people. Yeah, yeah. In fact, like some people, they say that like the very idea of um, Malay, Chinese, Indian, other, right? It's like a system that was put into place by the British to kind of like divide and rule us, to put like different races into like different boxes right here, so that like you kind of try to optimize for the interests of your community, right? But then avoid uh, optimizing for the well, welfare of a group as a whole. And I think another message we can get from the movie is like, mm -hmm. uh, we really need to value the, the democratic system we have in our country mm -hmm. and think critically and vote, vote, vote wisely. Don't like be like wrong. Yeah, uh, you, you vote the wrong people that and kill you. you wrong just, vote for the wrong people. Uh, yeah, wrong <laughs> vote for the wrong, wrong people. Oh, that's racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need well, to value the democracy system where we still get to vote, but mm -hmm. we have to think critically and vote yeah, wisely. Yeah. yeah, don't vote for people like uh, until you, you get people like Ho and then put us into that kind of situation. I mean, yeah, like because like they technically chose to be in that situation. Yeah, right? yes, and yeah, most yeah. of the people, seventy nine yeah, percent of people. Yeah. Speaking of which. Do you know what the 927 incident is? Can you tell me? Uh, the 927 is like a traffic a accident. Yes. Yeah, traffic accident. But like, do you know the yeah, story? Different races. Then is kind of like uh, escalated into like I I I I don't know like the, the exact the exact part of the story. Uh, I think it's kind it, it kind of like um, aligned to the war. A character, mm. so like you, you, you don't really know what's the story, but you just hear say. Oh. Then yeah, Chinese people say yeah, we just have to help the Chinese. Uh. I don't. Wong doesn't really know what what really happened. You're saying he doesn't actually. Yeah, know. Wong Wong doesn't really really know. In what fact, happened. none of us actually do know, right? I didn't, I didn't find out in details. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think like that just kind of fits lah. It's just like I, I only know that it's accidents that involve different races. Ah, I see. Yeah, and then it escalated. Then uh, he'll say at some point, and I just know that yeah, yeah, we have to spot our own kind. Do you feel that we're moving in a good direction uh, with respect to like things like even racial extremism or otherwise, or do you feel that we're moving in the wrong direction generally? Both. I would say both. You know? Both. Yeah, because oh. this thing is like like a very okay. like, complicated issues. You cannot like just like say like that everything is good or bad. Uh. There, there are certain parts of it is good, certain parts of it uh, mm -hmm. are bad. Yeah. So for for the uh, democratic uh, privilege, democratic process, and everything, I, I think it's a it is a we are moving in a good good way, which people are starting to realize that yeah, actually we can, we can change the government, we can mm -hmm. use our power to change the government. Yeah, and they value their votes. I think better than last time. Last time because BN has, has been like governed the, the countries for many years, and some 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 of the people is like like. Uh, However you vote, the BN will stick out. 
Mm. I think the, for the current situation, like it's a, it's a, they are moving in a good way. Mm. That people are realized that, that yeah, actually, our votes is very important. Mm. Yeah. Also for this part, I think yeah, it's, it's, it's good lah. It's good. Yeah. Okay. But then the bad part is like. Mm, um, the bad part is like like some like I, like I said just now some still very hold on to the, the racial racial thingy. Mm. Yeah, they still think that 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 have to like stick to their own race instead of thinking uh, Malaysian as a well. whole. Yeah, yeah. Well, we would hope that uh, if any of them out there is watching this or any other related content at a later point, so like in Safla. Yeah. So that's also one of the thing that I think we, we have to reflect. Uh, reflect. On our side. Even though there are no people manipulating us, mm. like, like uh, putting up the racial sentiments, mm. uh, uh, racing, uh, how to say, racing up the racial issues, mm. are we ourselves willing to mm. mix together and like mm. work together as Malaysian? I see. Instead of just care about our race. That's a beautiful uh, message right there. Okay then. Mm. Well, having said that, so I think that we've uh, discussed quite a number of uh, things already but I guess kind of like in the days ahead well what are maybe like some areas that you feel or that you hope that you will grow in as an actor uh, because I, I, I'm still like to me all, all my, my shooting experience is also a learning experience for me. Mm-hmm. so particularly like what I learned from the data I can't think of anything that that, that, that stand out yeah, at the moment. I see, okay, no worries, cool. Well, then let's go back to the original question then. I guess like, kind of like looking forward, right? So you just joined the acting industry as far as I know. So then, like what do you hope for, I guess, like in your like acting career in the days ahead or like maybe oh. like areas in which you might I think at the moment I just hope that like my, my career can be more uh, stable and, and uh, mm. the income can be more secure because at, at the moment it's still very uh, un- un- unstable in a way mm. yeah sometimes I get jobs I got jobs sometimes I don't have and sometimes the payment is still very low mm. I see yeah so hire this so, man hire this man hire this man hire this man hire this man <laughs> yeah yeah so I, I look at see I, look at him so yet now look at it look at him right <laughs> I think he's crying right now, but like, anyway, <laughs> I understand. Yeah, so, so yeah, I, I hope I, my, my career can be more, more secure so that I can uh, go a longer way yeah. in, in this part. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. Because uh, a lot of the actors in Malaysia, mm-hmm. they also have uh, other jobs mm-hmm. because it's really hard to get uh, stable income solely based on, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if I can get more jobs, then I think my career in this industry will go uh, long, will can, can, can stay longer. All right. So if I still can manage to like like get a stable income, then I also might opt for other options or take other part I see. Okay. I will pray for you right there. Thank you. Hire this man. <laughs> Hire this man. Okay, yes. All right. Um, okay then. So... Are there any last things that you would like to share uh, with the audience at large? Yeah, I think basically like uh, already shared most of the thing I want to say. Mm-hmm. Well, that being said, so thank you so much for taking part in well the great project that was Pendatang. Um, on a note of, um, I guess, personal reflection, I think that this film really will uh, change the country in ways that even like we may not necessarily understand or completely appreciate uh, right as of now. And yeah, so thank you again for like being a part of that. So I just think that um, uh, we, we need a lot of uh, support, support people, uh, support the local people. Yeah, so uh, since it's free, then yeah, you can like watch and rewatch and recommend to your friends and really need your support. And mm. not just the Dakar movie, any other local movies, if you wish to see that uh, our movies, the, the, the standard, the quality gets better, better, we really need the support uh, from, from all of you. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, support local movies. Maybe. <laughs> Hire this man. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. Thank you so much. Thank you. (laughs) All right. And that's a wrap. Cool.